So what were the best and worst Grammy winners of the 2010s? Y'all my opinion? Let's go. Oh, I came to vibe. You came to function just through that, baby. Don't worry about nothing, no, no, no. Good y'all, it's your boy Bright here, the R&B Kid, and I'm back again uh, with another video for y'all. I know I'm not giving y'all a video in a while, I'm sorry y'all, but like y'all know, I'm always between work and school, so I'm just always stressed out. Uh, but if you want to keep up with me, I'm on my Twitter, so follow me on my Twitter. I had some time today, so I wanted to sit down and do a video for y'all. Um, my last video that y'all love is my Grammy video, like I do every year, so I want to keep the vibes going. Um, I've been thinking about doing this video for a while now, but I just never actually sat down to do it. And also, I've been tinkering with this list uh, for a while now, but I finally feel good about it, so I want to uh, give it to you guys. And I, as you can see by the title, this video is going to be talking about my best and worst Grammy winners of the 2010s. Uh, so pretty much, you know, we're on the whole new, we're on the verge of like a whole new decade of Grammy history. Uh, when the nominations come out next week, we'll be, in the, you know, we'll be in a new decade of Grammy history. So I felt like it made sense to just, you know, give you guys this video and talk about, you know, who I thought was the best and worst Grammy winners of the past decade. I'm excited to see what y'all think about my opinions. I'm excited to see what y'all think about these categories. I'm only talking about the categories I usually care about. And a lot of these categories will have uh, runner-ups and honorable mentions. I feel like it's really hard for me to just like pin down like one best or worst winner in a lot of these categories I care about. So there will be some you know runner-ups and honorable mentions that I'll talk about as well. Uh, but yeah, man, I'm excited for this video. So let's talk about what happens in the last decade in the 2010s. I'm so excited. Y'all ready? Let's get it. All right, y'all. So first category guy is record of the year. So let's start off with record of the year, like I always do. So for my words for this category, that would definitely have to be "Get Lucky" by Daft Punk, Pharrell Williams, and Nile Rodgers. Um, to be honest, uh, record of the year for the 2010s. It was actually a pretty solid set of winners. So to me, there wasn't really actual, like there was no actual worst for me in this category. Uh, but if I had to pick one, I guess I'd say Get Lucky because it's the song I could do, I could do, I could do without in this category. It's, I feel like it's a song I could do the least with uh, from this decade, but it's a song that I'll still enjoy if I hear if it comes on, it's cool. Uh, but Get Lucky is just, you know, it's a cool song, but yeah, it's probably my least favorite, my least favorite uh, record of the year winner. Uh, but it's not a bad song. So for my best for a record of the year, that would have to go to Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson featuring Bruno Mars. Man, I love the song. What can I say about it? Uptown Funk maybe has to be one of the most fun and memorable songs like ever made. Your dad, your mama, your cousin, your auntie, your sister, they all know it and they all love it. Um, <laughs> and it truly was one to me one of the most like uh, memorable and staple songs that really defined the past decade uh man such an iconic bop um i still remember when it dropped and it still sounds just just as fresh today as it did when it first dropped i love that song it's such a great song so with such good energy it'll get any party started uh, to this day uh that song will be one of the songs that when we're all like 60 70 80 years old we'll all be like oh yeah this hit but stop for that right <laughs> like, come on man I don't know what I'm talking about. so yeah man definitely i uh, have to go to uptown funk uh right after that right next to the line i have to give it to hello by adele Man, Hello is definitely the next line in this category for me. It was such a beautiful and sweeping ballad that was definitely sung and produced to perfection. So shout out to Adele as well. All right, y'all, now we're on to Song of the Year. Uh, so for Song of the Year, I definitely just want to say uh, the last three years of Song of the Year, the last three winners, they were all trash in my opinion. Songs that I like, but they were all trash um, as Song of the Year winners. Uh, but the, the first seven winners of this category, the decade, were all amazing songs that I'm so glad won. And for that reason, uh, uh, this is definitely the hardest category for me, to, for me to like predict and pick my my favorite and my my best because the the first seven winners was all so good they were such good songs so it was hard but I'll tell you my winner in a second uh, but yeah let's get to it so for my worst uh, for song of the year for this decade my worst would have to go to This Is America by Childish Gambino. A song that I love. I'm so glad that one uh, that won record of the year. I feel like it was a very good record of the year winner uh, because it was, su it was such a such a different in your face, explosive song with a mess with a real message that you know America needed to hear um, in 2018 and uh, honestly until forever until we get our shit together. Um, so it's a song that I love, but really as a as a it's a record that I love. But as a song, it's really not that sophisticated. It's not it's not structured that well. It's a really random song with a really really weird like. Like structure that doesn't really feel timeless at all to me the the beauty of that record is really with the production and the the way they arrange the vocals and the the backgrounds and the just the way it felt but as a you know lyrically to me it wasn't that sophisticated so definitely should not have one song there at all i feel like that was just them the academy giving Charles again being a sweep back in 2019 um 
Um, but yeah, that was a random winner to me. I definitely didn't like that win at all. Um, but I'm glad he won record of the year. And my runner up for worst in song of the year would also go to Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. I love Bad Guy, it's a great song. I'm glad he won record of the year, but again, to me, this is another song that it was all about the production and the vibe, more so than the lyrics. To me, the lyrics were really random and weren't really that sophisticated. To me, it was a really easily written song and it didn't really show that much. I don't know, it just didn't show that much of, um, it was a very forward-thinking song, but it also was a really, like, simple song. So I feel like it should have won the biggest songwriting award the industry can offer somebody. Um, but I do love that song. I'm glad I won record of the year. And for my best and song of the year, I'm definitely going to go with Hello by Adele again. As y'all could see, I love Hello by Adele. <laughs> uh, but I definitely have to go with uh, Hello in this category because um, I just I just really love the dope story that the lyrics told in such a direct but also very poetic way. I just feel like the way that song was written and arranged, it was so masterfully done. It just feels like a, a timeless record that just has such a cool story to it. Like I said, really cool story. I love the way they wrote it out. The melody is amazing it's just a really well structured song that to me just sounds it'll sound good forever so i definitely love that song definitely my favorite uh winner of this decade and right after hello I ha i'd have um uh sam smith stay with me i have to give some love to sam smith uh, stay with me is another timeless pop record that i love as well so beautifully written so well written the melody is amazing as well uh, it really is another timeless song that just i feel like will sound good forever um Lyrics everyone can relate to, everyone can connect to, everyone's felt at some point. Um, you know, of wanting somebody to stay with you, even though it wasn't really working out. Uh, we've all been there, and that song is just so beautifully written uh, that it'll just sound good forever. So, those are two of my favorites of the song of the year. But if you picked any of those other songs from the first seven years to be your favorite, I'm not mad at you at all. You can make an argument for it, I won't be mad at you because um, you're all so good. But my favorites in this category are definitely Hello and Stay With Me. All right, y'all, now I want to album of the year. This is always the biggest award every year, like y'all know. Uh, so I just want to start by saying uh, that in my opinion, I feel like this is a very disappointing decade of winners, um, in my opinion. Uh, minus some gems, to be honest. Uh, this category, when I was reviewing it, I feel like it was just very boring. And it proved for me the tendency that a lot of voters had over the years to really use this category as a way to highlight, you know, the safe, crowd-pleasing, dark horse albums that, that were usually from, you know, the rock, alternative, folk, and country genres. Um, especially albums that really had little to no Im lasting impact in music outside of the year they came out. Um, and uh, they really prefer, especially back in the day, I think they changed the rules a few years ago, but especially back in the day when, when they used to also nominate like every featured artist on the album and, and really all the songwriters on the album compared to now, I think they only like nominate the main songwriters. So it's, it's, they definitely nominate less people in this category now. But back when they were nominating everybody that, that was involved in making of an album, a lot of mainstream, especially black artists suffered because a lot of mainstream and black artists uh, tend to have a lot more like, you know, feature artists on the albums, a lot more songwriters on the albums um, but people like Beyonce and Kendrick Lamar they suffered a lot early in the decade um, losing out on album of the year wins that I feel like they deserved because they had a lot of you know producers and songwriters and, and feature artists on those albums even though those albums were brilliant um, and uh, the, the Academy really, really loved to give this award to, you know, albums that were, were more quieter, had like way less songwriters and producers on it, uh, which I understand. But at the same time, I feel like there was somewhat of a, a somewhat of like a popular, not only say like a popularity bias, but I just feel like there was sometimes was a bias to award um, like more like underground or like more like non-pop or non-R&B or non-hip-hop albums in this category throughout the years. Um, unless your name was Taylor Swift, Adele, um, you know, in the pop world, but yeah, so that's my little spiel on album of the year. I've not liked it. Hopefully, that changes as we move forward. Um, but we'll see what happens. Uh, but for my, uh, I'll, I'll definitely say like the first half of this decade was definitely terrible to me, besides 21. 21 was great, uh, but the second half of the decade was a lot better. So, for my worst for album of the year in the 2010s, that would definitely have to go to Babel by Mumford and Sons. Uh, yeah, man, to me, this album, I've not listened to it in full, but I skimmed it for the video a while back, and that album to me just sounded like one long song. Uh, it just sounded like I it, I don't know it just sounded really it was a very folky album and I have nothing against like the folk sound but it just sounded boring it didn't sound really developed it sounded like it was just one long song it was a very boring album uh, so for me it's my least favorite winner of the year of the decade um, I feel like everyone else felt the same way because I remember when it won back in 2013 I remember that being like a huge surprise no one expected it I didn't expect it and I feel like it was it was kind of like one of those like really random dark horse wins that happened that happens from time to time and this is a really bad one because I feel like the year they won 
I feel like the award could have could have went to either Frank Ocean or Fun, um, in my opinion. But it is what it is. Um, and runner up for worst, um, these albums definitely are not bad. Uh, they definitely sound more interesting than Babel. Uh, but they're just albums that I don't really feel that much of, uh, much of a connection to. Um, but they're not bad albums, and that is Arcade Fire, Suburbs, and uh, Beck's Morning Phase. We all remember that. <laughs> Who is Beck? <laughs> So for my best album of the year winner of the decade, that would definitely have to go to When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go by Billie Eilish. When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go definitely wins for me because I feel like it was the most creative album of the decade, that one album of the year. Uh, it's such a dark and introspective album in some spots, but in, in other spots it's also like really, uh, you know, bright and engaging as hell as well. So, you know, it's really a dynamic album in that sense. And I truly think that this will be one of the most impactful albums for years and generations to come, you know? Yeah, so Phineas's next level production, uh, along with the unique songwriting and Billy's off kilter, you know, vocal delivery and arrangements and ideas was also brilliantly executed. And this album is such an amazing body of work uh, that came together so well to create a singular vibe. And it just gets better with time. It's crazy that it's just a debut. And my runner up for my best album of the year winner of the decade would have to go to 24 Karat Magic by Bruno Mars. Man, I'm actually surprised I'm saying this because I was really tight. I was so mad when 24 Karat Magic won over Dan back in 2018. I was really rooting for Dan to win. Uh, shout out to Kendrick Lamar. Uh, but looking back at the same time, 24 Karat Magic is a great album that's still popping to this day. Uh, you know, it was just it was a tight album. It was executed well. Nine songs, but it was tight and it was good. Um, you know vocals production the vibe on it it was just bop after bop uh and it still sounds fresh to this day you know bruno was ruling really his bag when he when he created that album um so I'm, and i'm also glad that at least like one like you know uh r and you know r&b type album won throughout the decade if it hadn't been for 24 Karat magic we would have had like no r&b albums winning in the past decade which is really sad so shout out to bruno mars for doing that for the culture a little bit <laughs> all right y'all now on to best new artists so for the best new artist category for my worst winner of the decade, my choice is Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. <laughs> Man, to be honest, I love Michael Moore and Ryan I like their music, even though they, they, don't, they don't really put out music like that. But I've always loved all the music when they did put it out back in the day. Uh, but honestly, for being real, uh, Michael Moore and Ryan Lewis have straight flopped after the Heist album. They have flopped. Everything they put out has just flopped. Um, and even though I still like their music and Michael Moore's solo music as well, I like his, I like his solo music as well, um, still to this day. Uh, just, you know, just looking back, I feel like this was a very whack win. That was just a part of their unnecessary, you know, haul back in 2014 when they collected like four or five Grammys, I think. Um, that was just a really unnecessary haul for them that year. I remember, th like, 2014 was one of the worst Grammy years ever, and Macklemore was a big part of the reason why I just hated that year. But yeah, man, especially when you see that they were up against, um, Casey Musgraves, Ed Sheeran, Kendrick Lamar, you know, all artists who have had, who have won plenty of Grammys since then, and who have, all, who have you know, who've had stellar careers since then. It's crazy that Macklemore and Ryan Lewis won Best New Artist that year. But looking back, honestly, it made sense because um, 2013, Macklemore and Ryan Lewis, they were everywhere. They were everywhere back in 2013, so it makes sense. But at the same time, like, that was just a really whack win looking back. So uh, they're my worst win of the decade, even though I love them and I love their music. Shout, shout out to those guys. And my honorable mention for worst win of the decade, that has to go to Esperanza Spalding. I have nothing against this woman. I like her. And I appreciate her music and I appreciate her career. Um, but I have nothing against her. Um, and she also, she's also won more Grammys in the jazz categories over the years too. Um, so she definitely has not been a flop for the Grammys or you know for her own career. Um, but this is also a very another very random win when it happened. Um, and I, I remember it was a very shocking win and it still is to this day. Uh, especially seeing as how she was up against Drake. Justin Bieber and Florence and the Machine. You know, like, it's crazy that she won out of all those artists. So, uh, this wasn't a, like a bad win, but it was just a, it was, a, it was a win that I didn't like because she was a very underground jazz artist that I didn't feel like needed to win over, you know, people, other people who were, who were really about to like become some of the biggest artists of the 2010s. So, that's just my opinion, but shout out to Esperanza Spalding. My best winner of best new artists in the 2010s that definitely have to go to Billie Eilish. 
shout out to Billie Eilish again. Uh, man, to me, Billie is everything, and I feel like she has the potential to really be a career artist and really just an icon for this generation. I love her, her music. I love her vibe. I love, I love her aura. I, lo I love what she gives to the game. I feel like she's a breath of fresh air, um, and I feel like she has so much potential to really just be a game changer and to really be a staple artist for this generation. So I'm looking forward to seeing what she does in her career. Uh, but in my opinion, she's my favorite winner and best new artist. I feel like she has the most. Um, she like she has the most exciting potential to me out of all the artists that won in the past decade. So I'm excited to see where she goes. Um, yeah, if you want, if you want to understand more why I love Billy, just go back to my album of the year synopsis. Just do that. <laughs> and Dua Lipa would definitely have to be a close second to Billy Eilish as my best winner and best new artist of the past decade. I love Dua Lipa. I think she's amazing. Um, just go listen to Future Nostalgia if you haven't already to understand why she's amazing and why she's my 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 runner up in this category. <laughs> um, I feel like she has so much to give to the pop world, and I can't wait to see her blossom into being the legend that I feel like she can be. So Dua Lipa. Would would definitely be a close second after Billie Eilish for me. All right, so now we're on to best pop solo performance. So for my worst in this category, my worst one of the decade definitely has to go to Happy, the live version by Pharrell. Um, shout out to Pharrell and shout out to Happy. I like that song. It's a song that I appreciate. We all know we all we all we all rock with it. Um, but I'm still shocked to this day that that a live version of Happy, uh, you know, really won over. You know, All of Me by John Legend, uh, Chandelier by Sia, and um, and Stay With Me by Sam Smith. Like, I'm still shocked to say that it won over all those songs. Uh, as some of the, you know, those songs are some of the most impactful uh, records of the decade. And Happy won over those songs. Like, that was really random. And um, even even Pharrell was, like, shocked. And he was shook when he won, too. Because he walked up to the stage like, yo, I really won this award. Like, he was looking around like, yo, I really won this award. Like, he knew, even he knew that Sam Smith should have won that award. Like, shit when the Academy, that was trash. It, it's, that should have been Sam Smith or John Legend or Sia's award. One of those people. Like, how did Pharrell take it? That was so random. And I, I'm not even mad at Pharrell because I, even though he, like, he knew, like, he didn't even want to take it. But he still accepted the award. But even he knew, like. I shouldn't have won this, but so that was complete trash. And my runner up for my worst in this decade would have to go to uh, Joanne, uh, Where Do You Think You're Going by Lady Gaga. And it's a cool song, cool little ballad, but it was just an album track. It was just an album track. It wasn't even a single. I don't even think it had a video. Or maybe it did have a video, but it was just a really random album track that was cool. You know, it had like a country folk vibe to it, but I'm really mad that they didn't give that award to Arna Grande for Goddess of Woman. I feel like they should have just given her that. Um, or Camille Cabello for you know Havana, whatever. But I just feel like you know Joanne had a nice had a nice vocal too, so I wasn't mad that it won. It had a really good vocal, but it felt like a really random win in a year where they were really giving a lot of awards to Lady Gaga because she was you know because she did a Star Is Born. But um, in my opinion, I didn't like that win. But it's it's a, it, the song is fine, so it is what it is. And for my best winner of this category throughout the decade, that would have to go to Hello Again by Adele. <laughs> Shout out to Adele. Um, Hello is still such a big and beautiful song and Adele's soaring vocals on that hook uh, with those dope lyrics still stand out to me amongst the whole decade. Um, shout out to Someone Like You as well. I did uh, Adele really killed the whole decade. Like Someone Like You is a great song as well. Now honestly I, I was low-key thinking I was thinking you know back and forth between Someone Like You and Hello but to me Hello it takes the edge but Someone Like You was another great song by her as well. Um, you know Adele really killed the whole 2010s in, in, with, with the Grammy. She really killed the whole decade Grammy wise. Um, but yeah man and shout out to the other timeless ballad in this category that is my runner up and that is Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. Shout out to Ed Sheeran. I love Thinking Out Loud. It's such a great song. Um, definitely a, one of the best pop ballads of the decade for sure. And while it might not have been like a, it might not have been like the best like vocal of the decade, I just love that song. I love the way he performed that. I love the way he just emoted on that track. It's just a good song overall. So I love that record. And definitely is one of my personal favorites of the decade. And I also want to give some love to the Lizzo's Truth Hurts as well. Um, that'll probably be like my third spot. <laughs> I just want to give some shout out to Lizzo for Truth Hurts. I love, I love as well one of, my, one of my personal favorite records in this category even though i wouldn't say it's like one of the best but definitely one of, definitely one of my personal favorites is truth hurts as well and i also just want to say before i wrap this category up that i think it's really interesting i think it's really fascinating how this category was really dominated by international and black artists throughout the decade like every winner was either an, an international artist or a black artist which i think is really interesting for the pop category um but yeah man the only one of this category that was an american white artist was lady gaga when she won for joanne and it, that was for like a song that wasn't 
even a hit. It was for like a non-factor song. That's so interesting, you know? All right, now on to best pop duo slash group performance. Um, so this one will, will be quick. Uh, go look back at my record of the year synopsis to go understand my choices for this category as well. Just really quick. My worst winner of the decade, again, is Get Lucky by Pharrell Williams, Daft Punk, and Nile Rodgers. Um, a song that I like, but you know, just, it's my least favorite winner. Uh, for my best winner of the of the decade and best pop duo slash group performance, again that is Uptown Funk by um, Mark Ronson and Bruno Mars, a song that I love to to death. You already know why. Go look back at record of the year. Uh, but I will say my uh, my runner up for my best in this category will be Shallow by Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper. Shallow is such a great song. I'm on a deep end, Come on, man. We all love that song, man. Shout out to Shallow. Uh, Lady Gaga marked that record. So did Bradley Cooper. I love that record. Um, good song. Great performance. Timeless record. It just feels so good. It feels like a timeless, you know, soundtrack song for our generation. I love that song. So definitely runner up in this category for me as being one of the best winners of the decade. Um, but yeah, man, my top spot still goes to Uptown Funk. All right, y'all. Now on to best pop vocal album. So for best pop vocal album, for my worst winner of the decade, that would have to go to Stronger by Kelly Clarkson. I love Kelly Clarkson. I love her too. I love her so much. I love her. And I, and I love her music. And I this album was cool. I enjoy Stronger as an album. But to be honest, outside of its singles, I probably offered the least to the world as a body of work um, compared to every other winner this decade. I honestly just really don't remember a lot of the album tracks off of Stronger besides the singles and um, the gem that is Einstein. I love that song. Einstein, I love that song. Uh, but besides the singles and Einstein, I don't remember a lot of the tracks off that album off memory, you know what I'm saying? So to me, this was the weak, the weakest winner in the, in, the, in the decade, but it wasn't a bad album at all. Um, and, I, and I still remember being shocked when it won, and, I, and she also was definitely shocked as well, because I remember she went up and she accepted the Grammy, she was so shocked when she won. Um, because I feel like even she knew that she was surprised to win over like Fun, who were an album of the year that year, um, with their album Some Nights. And to be honest, if there was an album that I thought would have been a dark horse for that year to win this category, I thought it would have been Pink's album, uh, The Truth About Love, not Kelly Clarkson's album. But um, it is what it is. I still love Kelly. I'm glad she won it again, uh, but really random win in my opinion. And for my best winner of the decade and best pop vocal album, that would definitely have to go to Sweetener by Ariana Grande. Shout out to Sweetener. I love this album. Uh, Sweetener was an album that really took a while to have its greatness recognized and really understood um, by a lot of people including myself to be honest um but it only gets better with time it's an album that really has just gotten so much better with time um and it really was an excellent addition to her catalog i always go back and forth between sweeter and thank you next for you know which was my favorite on grande album on any given day I, I, I can choose either one uh but yeah sweetener is definitely one of her best albums in my opinion and it houses some of her best songs you know god is a woman breathing uh no tears left to cry get well soon and so many other gems you know um, it was a great combo of like her usual pop vibes that she's mastered with, you know, from like Max Martin and Ilya. She's mastered that sound, but it also brought in like a new dose of like Pharrell energy uh, with this production that I really felt gave her like a really dope vibe and it really gave her like a retro spunk as well that is loved. And I really feel like it made it a really um, interesting and really like different album in her in her catalog. But to me, one of her smoothest and one of her most fly albums as a as a body work, it's a great album. So definitely my favorite winners of the decade for sure. Um, my personal, my personal favorite, favorite one of the decade. And right after Sweetener, I would have uh, Billy Eilish's When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? in my runner-up spot. Um, another great album that I already talked about in Album of the Year, so go listen to that again. But yeah, man, I love When We Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? So definitely get my runner-up spot. But my personal favorite album in this category, that one, definitely Sweetener by Arna Grande. She killed that. All right, y'all, now on to the R&B categories. Let's get it, A. <laughs> All right, so, so first up in the R&B category, then we're gonna do uh, best R&B performance. So for best R&B performance, uh, my worst winner of the 2010s decade that would have to go to Is This Love by Corinne Bailey Ray. Uh, man, shout out to Corinne Bailey Ray. Nothing against her. I love her as an artist. Um, but is this love to me definitely shouldn't have won and definitely my least favorite winner of the decade it was just a cover of a really dope reggae song uh blessed up to bob marley and the whalers um bob marley will forever be loved and missed um but yeah man it was just a cover of a really famous reggae song and it, it won best r&b performance um so that was kind of random to me and i would have rather i feel like there were other better songs that year i would have rather Marsha and Brocious's far away run that year 
Far Away by Marsha Ambrosius was a really good song that I just feel like I would have rather it got that recognition, but it's all good. Uh, so that's my least favorite winner in this category. And for my best winner of the decade for best R&B performance, that would definitely have to go to Snarky Puppy and Layla Hathaway for something. Oh my God, y'all. That If you've not heard this song, you are not living your best life. <laughs> when I tell you the vibes that Snarky Puppy, that band, and Lila Hathaway created in that session when they recorded something is unlike anything else you'll ever experience in your life. Lila Hathaway's vocals on that song, like the way she did a three-part harmony, the whoo! Like, guys, you don't understand. In the end, something is, is still like nothing I've heard before. They created such, such an iconic vibe during that session that it still sounds so good to this day. You, I get chills whenever I hear it. Um, but yeah, man, shout out to the band players. Um, there's something that's so special about that song. So shout out to Layla Hathaway and Starkey Puppy, my favorite winner of the decade, hands down. Oh, and that was also a surprise too because before that song got nominated, I didn't know that song. And then when I got nominated, I heard it and I was like, yo, this is crazy. I hope it wins. And then it won. And I was so happy. <laughs> And my runner-up for my best winner of the decade in R&B performance, that would definitely go to her and Daniel Caesar for their song, Best Part. Man, this is such an iconic duet. I feel like this is like a new age classic for our generation. Um, to me, this is definitely, it'll definitely go down as one of the most staple and iconic R&B joints of our generation. I love this song. It's such a beautifully made and such a beautifully written song um, with a great melody and just amazing lyrics. And it just feels so good. It feels so pure. It feels Feels like music. I love best part. So that definitely is my runner-up for best R&B performance. I love that song. All right, y'all. Now on to best R&B song. So for best R&B song uh, for the 2010s decade, my worst winner of the decade would definitely have to go to Pusher Love Girl by Justin Timberlake. Uh, man, y'all know I love Justin Timberlake. I love him. I love, I love, I love the 2020 Experience album. Definitely one of the best, in my opinion, like one of my favorite like pop R&B albums of all time. I love that album, and I like Push Logo. I like the song. I love it. Um, but even though it's a great song. There's something that doesn't really sit right with me still to this day with Justin Timberlake having won that award back in 2014 um, over Tamar Braxton's Love and War. I feel like Tamar Braxton's Love and War was such a masterful R&B track. That song was a masterpiece of an R&B song that I feel like it deserved to win this category. Uh, shout out to LaShawn Daniels, shout out to DJ Camper, shout out to Tamar Braxton. Y'all wrote the hell out of that song. Love and War is such a timeless, so well, like well-constructed, well-written song that really should have won. And uh, Justin Timberlake's Justin Timberlake's Push Love Girl was an album track. It wasn't even a single. It was an album track that um that was cool, but it was just an album track, and it also had a lot of mentions of drug use. So that really didn't sit, sit right with me as a winner of an R&B song. Um, but you know, it's cool. And, but yeah, as a whole, 2014 was just one of like the worst Grammy years in general. So I'm not surprised. Uh, the Grammys really let Justin Timberlake win. A bunch of Grammys in the R&B and the, and the rap categories uh, because they stumped him in the general and all throughout the pop categories. So it, 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 there was a lot of really weird and a lot of messed up shit happening that year. And Justin Timberlake was another part of that. You know, like Macklemore, Ryan Lewis, Justin Timberlake. Like the, the 2014 Grammy year was just terrible. I hated that year. And this is another example of why. <laughs> And for my best winner of the decade in R&B song, that would have to go to Adorn by Miguel. I love Adorn, y'all. Such a good song. Uh, shout out to Miguel, man. He was definitely um, in his bag when he made the song. I think he wrote it by himself, or maybe I think he wrote it by himself. Did he? Yeah, he wrote the song by himself. Miguel Lee decided to write the song one day, and I don't think he knew that he was Lee creating one of the best R&B songs of our time. Like. Adorn will always go down as one of the best R&B songs of our generation. It's a massive record. You could play it at weddings. Everybody knows the melody. Everyone knows the, knows the lyrics. It's such a good song. He sung it so well. The lyrics are they're perfect. Um, they're romantic. They're timeless. Like Adorn is just a all around a whirlwind of an amazing R&B song. So I'm so glad it won. Shout out to Miguel. Love that song. And my runner-up for my best uh, winner of R&B song in the decade of the 2010s was definitely Ella Mae's Booed Up. Got me booed up, booed up. 
Boot up, boot up. <laughs> Shout out to Ellen May. I love that song, Boot Up. We all love Boot Up. Boot Up to me is definitely also, along with Adorn, Boot Up to me is also one of the other like staple RB songs of our generation. Uh, both of them will go down as like being two of the most classic RB songs of our time. Um, the melody and the arrangement of Boot Up is so well done. It's masterful. It's amazing. Um, it's a song that like literally will get stuck in your head and you'll just be saying it. Like, it's a really good song that was constructed so well. Um, so I'm so glad. Um, shout out to, G uh, shout out to uh, DJ Mustard. Shout out to LMA. I think uh, Rance, also Lawrence Dobson. I think he won that award too. Um, shout out to all the people who helped write that song. Joel James. Uh, Boot Up is a great song that we'll be singing when we're old as hell because it's that good. So shout out to this category. Shout out to Adorn and Boot Up. Uh, two of my favorite RB songs from our time and from this past decade. Great songs. Now we're on to best traditional R&B performance. Uh, so for best traditional R&B performance for the 2010s decade, my worst winner of the decade would definitely have to be uh, Please Come Home by Gary Clark Jr. Shout out to Gary Clark Jr. I like him, uh, but to me this is another error uh, from the 2014 ceremony. The 2014 ceremony was terrible, and this is another example of that. <laughs> uh, so Please Come Home, I don't hate the song at all. I don't hate it at all. Uh, but to me, it was it was the most regular song in this category. It was just a really regular performance. Uh, compared to all the other winners in this category throughout the decade and um, It's really the song that I had the least you know affinity towards out of all the winners in the decade uh, But I will give it the fact that the guitar solos on that song were sick the guitar solos on, the, on this song were sick uh, So I'll give it that and I also loved um, Gary Clark Jr's sweep in 2020 with the amazing this land album So I'm glad he won. I think he won three or four Grammys uh, this past year with the this land album So uh, but I, I didn't like that he won this award because I feel like he took it away from Fantasia who I was really rooting for to win it for get it right I really feel like Fantasia should have won this Grammy for get it right um, but it's cool yeah, at the end of the day Fantasia she still has a Grammy to her name so I'll take it but I really feel like this should have been Fantasia's award to take uh, but Gary Clark Jr took it and my honorable mention for my worst in this category for the decade definitely goes to Lila Hathaway songs, Little Getter Boy and Angel. Um, both were good performances, but they were just covers of her daddy songs. Um, and even though they were covers, uh, a lot of covers win Grammys, but like these covers didn't really have a lot of new life breathed into them as much as other ones that have won Grammys. And um, I really feel like there were more deserving songs uh, each year that Lila Hathaway won these, you know, these solo Grammys. But um, uh, she will be my best, so we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Alright, and my best winner of the 2010s decade for this category would definitely go to Love On Top by Beyonce. Come on, man. What other song was going to win this decade for me? Love On Top by Beyonce. What this song still does for me in my soul and ears still to this day is just it's it's it's, it's indescribable to be honest um uh, especially with that with like the four key change at the end of that song it, still to this day i just get chills listening to that outro of that song with her going higher and higher it's just it's crazy it's nuts um yeah that's this song is still something else man love on top is something else uh to me this will definitely go down as one of her best songs and definitely one of the most impactful songs that beyonce gave to the world and to be honest this never gets old like love on top never gets old it still sounds good to this day i um and it, it's just a, it's a really all around amazing record um that has performed so well the vocal the production everything is just amazing um and shout out to the Sublime Jesus Children as well in my runner-up spot by Robert Glasper Experiment, Layla Hathaway, and Malcolm Jamal Warner. I love Jesus Children. It's such a gem off of the Black Radio 2 album. Um, even though it was a cover, um, this was a cover that had a lot of life breathed into it, unlike Layla Hathaway's solo covers that won Grammy. So I love this record uh, by Layla Hathaway and Robert Glasper and Malcolm Jamal Warner. Um, I love the poem by Malcolm at the end. It was such a nice poem. This is such an, uh, an empowering, soothing, and uplifting, and you know, spiritually renewing and soul fulfilling track. It just sounds so good. It just sounds, it just gives you peace. You know what I'm saying? I love this track. Shout out to Jesus Jones as well. Such a gem throughout the decade. All right, y'all. Now we're on to Best Urban Contemporary Album, uh, which is now called Best Progressive RB Album, but, but for the entire 2010s, it was called Best Urban Contemporary Album. One of my favorite categories every year, like y'all know. Uh, so for my worst winner of the 2010s decade for this category, that would definitely have to go to Girl by Pharrell. Man, that whole, I really have Pharrell in a lot of my worst picks. <laughs> I, I, Y'all know, I love Pharrell's a legend, I love that man. But that whole girl era really, like, I'm really mad that he swooped a lot of Grammys they shouldn't have won. I'm glad he won Best Music Video for Happy, but Happy shouldn't have won Best Pop Solo, and this album shouldn't have won Best Urban Contemporary at all. Um, I like the Girl album, it's a cool album, and it still has gems. Um, Hello 
Monroe, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Augusta Wynn. Yeah, that, that album has gems, uh, and it's still, it's still a cool listen to today, uh, but it definitely should have one over uh, Beyonce's subtitle album. Listen, y'all, uh, subtitle by Beyonce, that should have won this category at least. It, it, it lost album of the year, uh, but it should have at least won this category. And when Beyonce lost this category to Girl, I was like, wow, really? Y'all really y'all really gave Girl the Grammy over Beyonce's subtitle album, a game changer, impactful, like, legendary album. Y'all gave it to Girl. And, and this is an album that no one really, like, outside of Happy, no one really remembers this project to, to this day. You know what I'm saying? So Duffy was the weakest winner of the decade for me. And my honorable mention for my worst winner of the decade in this category, that would definitely go to The Weeknd for Starboy. Uh, shout out to The Weeknd. I like the Starboy album, it's a cool album. It has so many great tracks on it. Uh, but to me, the nomination was good enough. I don't know if y'all remember, but this is the year uh, Sisters, Sisters Control was nominated, and this is the year uh, Charles Gambino's Awake My Love was nominated. One of those two albums should have won this Grammy, not Starboy. I don't know why that happened. That was hella disrespectful to Sizzle and Charles Gambino. At least one of those artists should have won this category hands down that was disrespectful as hell in my opinion um you know i get that it was the most commercially successful album of that grammy year it was but um at the same time it was, it was a really bloated album and it really lacked depth to be honest and the snubs for scissor and childish were really just wild so that was wrong as hell um but star wars it's not a bad album so it is what it is and my pick for the best winner of this decade in this category that would definitely have to go to beyonce's lemonade lemonade is such a good album y'all what other album would have been my top spot what other album would have been my top spot come on y'all like lemonade was definitely gonna be my top spot such a good album um, i don't think we've ever seen a uh, more of a perfect storm of an artist being at a certain point in their life uh whether it was really give us an album like lemonade with all that damn blackness the sonic experimentation uh the expansion on such matter from, from our personal life you know pulling from what her and jay-z were going through at that time um it's really such a timeless and impeccable album uh that really showcases one of our modern greats you know at her at one of her creative peaks you know and it really is a shame that it didn't even win album of the year it's such a shame it didn't win album of the year even adele called it out that is all <laughs> And my runner-up for my best winner of the decade is category that would definitely have to go to Channel Orange by Frank Ocean. I love this album. Uh, this album to me is definitely one, one of the most impactful albums of the decade. You know, Channel Orange is really such, is still such an abstract masterpiece and such a well thought out and well executed and beautifully written and produced album that just touched on so many deep topics. And I love the way Frank Ocean really, you know, really leveled up to a new level of artistry with that album. It was a great album that definitely, if it wasn't for Lemonade, it would have been my top spot but let me they took that but if i had to have a runner up definitely will be channel orange shout out to frank ocean great album bro great album now we're on to best r&b album so for best r&b album uh for the 2010s decade my pick for the worst winner of the decade that would definitely have to go to fame by chris brown shout out to chris brown fame wasn't a bad album and honestly it low-key has some of his best songs you know look at me now no bs say with me all my love she ain't you deuces has some of his best songs low key but as a whole album like the other tracks like it really as, as a whole album it's a really weak and scattered body of work to be honest and i feel like it also colors too much outside the line of r&b that i feel like it's a shame that it won the best r&b album category um also in what in my opinion what, in what was one of the weakest years in r&b which is 2011 that was one of the weakest years r&b ever saw and he won this Grammy before they ever invented the best urban contemporary album category, which is where he would have fit better. So it's a shame that he won this category in a year where R&B was dry and they couldn't place him anywhere else, but he shouldn't have won his Grammy. In my opinion, this should have been Beyonce's Grammy for four. And, and to me, I'm still shocked to this day that Beyonce was even nominated for four. In my opinion, that's one of her best albums and she wasn't even nominated this year. And I honestly, even if, even if she didn't win, I feel like she should have been nominated. She wasn't even nominated. In my opinion, she should have won this Grammy this year for best album for four. That was a that was a great album, but it is what it is, man. Yeah, Chris Brown definitely gets my pick for the worst win of the decade for sure. And my honorable mention for my worst win of the decade for this category, that would definitely go to Alicia Keys for Girl on Fire. Honestly, while it has gems like Listen to Your Heart, 
fire we make and a few other tracks. Um, honestly, with, with all the fire R&B albums that dropped from the late 2012 to uh, that whole uh, 2013 era, there were so many fire R&B albums that dropped that year that I can't believe that Alicia Keys' worst album, in my opinion, represented the best of that year. I can't believe that, still to this day. Shocked to see that she won that year. Um, and it gave her her third win in this category. She has, I think she has the most wins in this category for an album that was weak as hell. Like that was just wasn't right to me. Um, but yeah, so while both albums, in my opinion, were, were equally undeserving, Fame takes the cake because at least it committed category fraud. But neither Fame or Girl on Fire should have won this category throughout the decade. Terrible decisions both for both albums, terrible. And for my best winner of the decade for R&B album, that would definitely have to go to Black Radio by Robert Glasper Experiment. What can I say about this album, y'all? Black Radio, oof, man. Uh, Black Radio is such an incredible album, a special album uh, to me that has meant so much to me throughout my life. Um, I played so many, so many of these songs, you know, countlessly ever since uh, this album dropped in uh, during my senior year of high school. I played so many of these songs throughout the years, all on repeat. I love these songs. This whole album is just amazing from head to toe. Um, yeah, I don't know. These, this this album just never gets old, and it's such a fresh and timeless and so well put together and brilliantly produced album um, by Robert Glasper and his band. Um, such a vibe from start to finish, such a vibe, and literally one of those albums that I can point to. Um, shout out to Black Radio 2 as well. Uh, one of those, it's one of those albums I can point to uh, when I think of like my favorite projects of all time that just show like my taste and like show why I love music. Black Radio, hands down. Shout out, to my, shout, out to, shout out to Joe Vanna, shout out to Jojo, like all my friends that love Black Radio, that album, everything to this day. And my honorable mention for my best winner in the R&B album category throughout the 2010s decade, that would definitely go to Her by Her. Uh, this was her debut compilation album that was just a, a combination of like her, like, you know, her previous EPs. Uh, but as an album, it really was a great body of work. It worked really well as an album. And to me, her compilation really was the genesis of a new R&B star for our generation uh, with banger after banger. I'm such an immaculate modern R&B masterpiece. Her, uh, the her album is such a amazing showcase of her talent, her potential, um, the her uh, amazing songwriting ability, her, her 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 ability to put together great melodies and just her smooth voice over like seductive, breezy R&B songs. It's just. It's perfection. All right, y'all, now we're on to the rap categories. Let's get it, now we're doing rap. And first up, we got best rap performance. So for best rap performance, uh, we're gonna start with the worst, my worst winner of the 2010s decade. For sure, it has to be Thrift Shop by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Has to be. Uh, so let's be honest. Uh, Thrift Shop for me is still, is still such a fun song that I love to this day, um, and it really is a bop to be honest. Um, and it, it was everywhere back in 2013. Um, and even though it was always a setup to win because it was one of the biggest songs of the year, it was always it was always a setup. I feel like it never should have won over Star from the Bottom by Drake and uh, Swimming Pools by Kendrick. Like, those, one of those songs should have won that year, not Thrift Shop. But, like I said, it was, it was a setup because it was the poppiest song of the category. Um, but, in my opinion, I felt like that song was just too poppy for the award. And uh, it didn't deserve the award. But it was still a fun song. I enjoyed it. So, I'm not mad at it winning. But, I feel like it was just a weak winner, in my opinion. And for my best winner of the decade, that would definitely have to go to Humble by Kendrick Lamar. Shout out to Kendrick Lamar, man. Humble takes my top spot. And right under that, in my runner-up spot, I got All Right by Kendrick Lamar. So shout out to Kendrick Lamar. He got, he got both of my top spots. Uh, for the you know the best winners of this category in the decade, uh, Kendrick Lamar pretty much to me was the guy who killed the Grammys uh, and the rap Grammys in the 2010s, as you can see here. Um, to be honest, you know both of these Kendrick tracks are pure hip hop magic for me. Uh, the feelings that they both you know still invoke within me, uh, you know all these years later, still to this day, it's just insane. And I feel like both of these tracks will go down um, as two of like the most classic and impactful tracks the genre has seen. Um, not just for the generation, but I, I'd even say all time too, you know? Um, that crazy production by Michael made it on a humble, you know, mixed with like Kendrick's catchy and nimble flow and energy just give it, you know, to me just give it the edge over all right in performance. But both of these tracks are insane. Shout out to King Kendrick. Amazing, bro. Amazing. All right, y'all. Now on to Best Rap Sung Collaboration, uh, which for the past few years was called Best Rap Sung Performance. And as of this year, uh, from now on out, it's going to be called Best Melodic Rap Performance. Um, Best Melodic Rap Performance, I don't like that title at all. I've told y'all that in my previous videos. I don't like that title. But 
it is what it is. I, I think Moloch Rap is like the name of the game anyway, so I get the title, even though I think I personally love the title best rap song performance the most uh, especially when you, you know you consider solo performances that are not that are not just collaborations but and before i get into it i also want to say jay-z and rihanna were definitely the king and queen of this category in the 2010s uh jay-z i think he won like i think they both won like five of these grammys um throughout the decade uh, shout out to you know rihanna and jay-z collab king and queen uh from the last decade in this category they both killed this category um but yeah my worst winner of this category throughout the last decade my worst is definitely drake's hotline bling i hate to say it because hotline bling is a bop i love it y'all love it we all love it when it comes on and you know it still rocks to this day uh but to me it was definitely like my least favorite and the worst winner of the decade uh because it's a lightweight track that really doesn't it's not really like talking about anything um and even drake himself didn't really feel right about winning it like even when he won i think he felt bad he felt like he shouldn't have won either and he shouldn't have um but i respect him for realizing that it was a corny move for the grammys to give him that award when it should went to somebody else so i respect him for that shout out to drake for that um but yeah hotline bling only won because it was the biggest and most recognizable song that came out that year in the category but um and also it was the first year that they were considering solo performances so i feel like drake was always you know the poster child for you know the solo rap sung song so i feel like it was always a setup for him to win it was always always it was always a setup for him to win um because he, he was he was he was the poster child for that type of movement in rap but at the same time there were better songs out that year i feel like ultralight beam should have been um, in contention you know by kanye chance rapper kelly price i think the dream kirk franklin some other people and that was a dope song um, and if not Ultralight Beam because it had all those people on it, I would have had uh, Beyonce and Kendrick's, uh, Kendrick Lamar's Freedom winning this category. I feel like Freedom by Beyonce and Kendrick should have won this year. I feel like that to me was like the best song in the category. I feel like I definitely feel like it should have won, um, you know, as part of the Lemonade era, but it is what it is. Drake is going to be Drake and y'all going to eat it up. So he won that award that year, but in my opinion, he shouldn't have won that. That was trash. And for my best winner of the decade in this category, that would definitely have to go to Kendrick Lamar, uh, Bilal, Anna Wise, and Thundercat for These Walls. I never thought I would have chose this track, but honestly, even though These Walls might not seem like the obvious pick for this decade, uh, to me, this track is still sick. It's such a cool track. It still sounds fresh as hell to this day. And it definitely was a focal point of the brilliant To Pippa Butterfly album. Um, and it truly is a great, you know, collaboration between all the artists involved and it was just a great performance by everybody that was on this track um great production great performances great lyrics great concepts it was just a really dope track um that's really sexual and funky um but it's also it's also tied into talking about like you know real shit and struggles as well so it's a really cool track that's like a mix of like fun vibes you know sexy vibes but it's all talking about just, it's talking about some real stuff you know what i'm saying so really cool track all around uh, such a dynamic track and one of my favorite tracks off of the Timber butterfly album shout out to kendrick lamar balao and the wise and thundercat these walls was definitely a highlight for me for this decade so it's it's my it's my best for the decade and my runner-up spot i have all the lights by kanye west Rihanna, Kid Cudi, and Fergie, and a lot of other artists too, but those are the main artists that won the Grammy. Uh, shout out to All The Lights. It's still such an iconic track to this day. I love that song. It still sounds fresh uh, to, to this day. And definitely to me, it's like one of the most iconic like rap songs of this generation, for the, you know, and definitely in the past decade. So um, All The Lights is definitely a highlight off of the my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy album. And to me, it'll be, it will be the runner up right after these walls. Now we're on to best rap song. So for best rap song, for my worst winner of the decade, surprise, surprise, we're gonna go again with Drake's Hotline Bling. <laughs> Shout out to Hotline Bling, like I said, I love it. Um, you can pretty much just go back to what I was saying when I was talking about it with best rap song collaboration. Um, cool song, but honestly, it wasn't really written that well. It was a really, you know, lazily written song. It wasn't really written with that much sophistication. And that, you know, I don't really think Hotline Bling had that much of an impact as a song um you know with you know the the, the production the melody yeah but I, with lyrically maybe not so much so i feel like it definitely was the worst winner and best rap song for the decade um but i'm not surprised it won and for my best winner of the decade for best rap song one of my favorite rap songs of all time and that is kendrick lamar's all right so all right actually took the cake in this category for me um whereas humble took best rap performance i definitely feel like all right takes the cake for best rap song because the lyrics of all right are just like some of i think i don't know pharrell and kendrick gordas in their bag when they when they worked on creating all right 
All Right, as we all know, has been an anthem for our generation for the Black Lives Matter movement, as it should be, because the lyrics of that song are just so powerful, so inspirational, so uplifting. Um, you know, whether you're black or not, like, that song is just a song that could just make you, you could be in the worst mood and you hear that song, you feel inspired, you feel motivated, you feel empowered, you feel ready to, you know, you feel ready to to fight for, for a cause, you know what I'm saying? So, All Right to me is one of the most masterful hip hop songs ever made. Lyrically, it's, it's masterful. It truly is a hip hop anthem. I feel like it's gonna be one of the most iconic hip hop tracks that uh, that'll go down in all time. So uh, to me, it was my favorite rap song of the decade. That one, um, such an important song for me in my life. I love All Right, like another centerpiece of the Tip of a uh, Butterfly album. Uh, man, All Right, that song is just everything. So what can I say about it? That's definitely my top winner for best rap song of the decade. And right under that, I give props to Twenty One Savage and J Cole for a lot that comes in right under uh, All Right. Shout out to a lot. Also, to me, in my opinion, will be one of the most iconic songs of hip hop um, for our generation um, and, and for generations to come. I love a lot. I just feel like the way that song was written and arranged. I da 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 da. I like how many da da da. I like. Like I love that. Like I love the way they arranged the song. I love the way they wrote it out. J Cole's verse was nuts. Um, yeah, like all around, it's a dope rap song. So I, I love the way they wrote that out. And I'm glad 21 Savage and J. Cole finally got a Grammy for that song. Both of them been needed a Grammy, so I'm glad they finally got it with that masterful record. Shout out to, shout out to 21 Savage and, and J. Cole for a lot. I love that song. Definitely my second favorite of the decade. Uh, but yeah, man, that is best rap song. All right, y'all, now on to best rap album. So for best rap album, this is always such an important category every year, uh, at least for me it is. Uh, for best rap album, for my worst winner of the decade, that would have to go to The Heist by Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. Uh, shout out to Macklemore and Ryan Lewis. I, I have nothing against y'all, like I said. Um, the Heist was an interesting album that I still enjoy to this day. Um, it wasn't a bad album at all. I like it. Uh, but to me, the win for best rap album was horrible because one, Kendrick Lamar was right there with Good Kid, Mad City. Um, I still remember being shocked that Kendrick lost that award to Macklemore Ryan Lewis. Um, I know Macklemore Ryan Lewis won Best New Artist, so that's probably why, but uh, Kendrick was right there with Good Kid, Mad City, and I feel like that was the best rap album of that year, and I'm shocked today that he didn't win it. That was Kendrick's to lose, and I'm mad. I'm still shocked that they gave it to Macklemore Ryan Lewis, but... Um, yeah, besides Kendrick being right there, the album also really leans into a lot of like pop and alternative vibes that I, I, don't, I don't have any, I don't, I don't have any problem with, but I feel like because of that, it really shouldn't have won best rap album, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but that's just my opinion. Just like I feel like Tyler Critter's Igor, that was a brilliant album, that was one of my favorite albums of last year, but I don't feel right about it having won best rap album, uh, but it was a great project, so kind of like that. Um, but yeah, man. Uh, it's also it's for me. It's not because Macklemore and Ryan Lewis were white. That's not what it is for me. I, that, that's not my issue. Uh, but for me, the heist overall uh, still feels like the worst one of the decade, and a symbol really of like mediocre but enjoyable rap being celebrated um, when it's done through like a white or when it's done through like a pop lens. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I have an issue with the heist winning best rap album over Kendrick Lamar. We all know there was a lot of bullshit with that, um, and it still rubs. It still it still stings till today. You know what I'm saying? I still feel it till today. That was a really messed up win, um, but it is what it is, man. Um, especially when there's like more noteworthy co uh, material competing against an album like The Heist. I'm like, how did y'all give it to The Heist? We had Good Kid, Mad City right there. If not Good Kid, Mad City, how about um, Nothing Was The Same? Like, I just, oh, oh that, sorry, that was the next year, I think. Yeah, that was the next year, but still, like, oh, wait, no. No, that was the same year. Yeah, that was the same year. Nothing Was The Same was that same year. Like, I don't, I don't understand, like, how they gave it to The Heist, like, Come on, like we had, uh, we had nothing was the same. We had Magna Card Holy Grail, which uh, maybe not my card. <laughs> but yeah, man, we had Kendrick and Drake right there. I don't understand why they gave it to the heist. And in my runner-up spot for the worst one of the decade, that will go to Recovery by Eminem. Uh, this is an album that I also don't feel like was bad. I just don't have that much of a connection to it. Um, to me, it's the album that won in this decade that I have the least uh, like affinity towards, so that's my runner-up spot. Uh, but I don't think it was a bad album when I when I looked back on that one. Um, but yeah, so that's those are my worst winners of the decade. All right, y'all, for my best winner of the decade in this category, I'm so happy to talk about this. Um, I'll be surprised if anybody else thinks differently, but my best winner of the decade would definitely have to be To Pimp a Butterfly by Kendrick Lamar. Guys, To Pimp a Butterfly, oh, this album. To me, uh, T-Pab <laughs> is one of the greatest albums ever made, in my opinion. I love this album to the depths of my soul. Um, man, from Kendrick's, you know, from his flow and bars, uh, to the dope, to the dope, you know, to the dope, like jazzy, funky, soulful production. Uh, that was also mixed in with like hard hip hop edges as well. 
um, with the sequencing and the overall vision for the album and the way they executed the album. Uh, I, really, I really feel like it's an album that will stand the test of time. And it tr it's truly one of the first albums that I think about when I think about a modern masterpiece uh, for our generation. Like, hands down, if someone asks me, what do you think is one of the greatest albums ever made all time, or at least for your generation, I always think of Typical Butterfly first. Like, that's always one of my first albums that I want to think about. Um, it's an album that I truly am in love with. It's an album that I feel like uh, when it dropped, stopped the world for me. And every time I think back on the album, I still feel like it's one. Of, it's such a, an achievement. Um, what Kendrick and company done the album is just insane. Uh, like I said, bars, production, um, the way they sequenced it, like it's just the concepts, the way what he was getting on the album. As a black man, that album has done so much for me. Uh, shout out to Kendrick Lamar. I think he was talking about so many important black issues on the album, from you know black beauty, um, you know, and black insecurity, black wealth, the you know black families. Like oh, he was talking about so much stuff on the album. That album was just brilliant. Um, and in my runner-up spot for best winner of the decade for this category, that will go to My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy by Kanye West. Another hip-hop masterpiece, in my opinion. Um, that was, you know, that was, a, that was another album that involves a lot of collaboration by a lot of people, but it was an amazing masterpiece and a, an amazing achievement of an album for sure, hands down. Yeah, to me, My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy was just a total cultural reset back in 2010 when it dropped. And this is coming off of, you know, all the drama that Kanye had with, you know, that whole Taylor Swift situation. And he just came back and gave us literally one of his best albums. Um, and it's an album that still means a lot to me to this day. Uh, a lot of great big songs. Uh, really just a beautifully produced, put together album that I definitely feel like after t after T-Pab, definitely to me was one of the best winners of the decade. Um, to Pill Butterfly to me gets the edge over my beautiful Dark of Fantasy um, because it was way more inclusive of Kendrick's vibe and his artistic contributions. Whereas, um, you know, whereas even though my 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 beautiful Dark of Fantasy was like a more expansive and forward thinking album and it really was a game changer, um, it was really collab heavy. And T Pap to me is the best example of a more like earthy and pure, straight through, like dope classic hip-hop masterpiece uh, that examined you know black like i said blackness generational trauma um black struggles the black dollar black beauty like i said mental health um and discrimination in such a complex layered and uh, beautiful way you know what i'm saying so yeah th that's my spiel on those albums two of my favorite albums in hip-hop of my generation and those are my choices let me know what y'all think Oh yeah, last thing I'll say about best rap album. Honestly, looking back, uh, besides the albums from the white rappers from this decade, this is actually an amazing lineup of winners throughout the whole decade. Like this whole decade was actually a really great lineup of winners. Uh, really, a lot of classic albums in my opinion. Um, shout out to Tyler the Creator for being the first winner of the category that wasn't really a rap album, but it still was a masterpiece. So I'll take it. <laughs> All right, y'all, now we're on to the last category that I'll talk about, and that's best music video. So let's get it. That last category I'll talk about, uh, best music video. Uh, before I get into it, I also just want to say um, shout out to all the black women, especially Melina Matsukis, and really just all the black artists in general who were also, who like surprisingly killed this category throughout the whole decade. Like a lot of black artists really won this category throughout the decade. I thought that was just dope. When I look back at it, I'm like, oh shoot, like mad black artists won this category in the decade. So that was good to see. Um, never stopped coming when I, but when I look back at it, I'm like, oh yeah, like they really did kill this category. I wish a lot of this love could be transferred to the general categories throughout the decade, but that's another story for another day. <laughs> but yeah, for best music video, my worst winner of the decade, shout out to Mama, I love her, but it'll go to uh, Rolling in the Deep by Adele. Uh, shout out to Adele, I love her and I love that song. Rolling the Deep is a great song and the video wasn't bad. It was just a really run of the mill and really ordinary and, un and unforgettable video. It was just an ordinary video that I don't remember to this day. Like that was a very basic video that I'm shocked really won that this Grammy. Like it really won best music video. It was a really basic video, like a really random one. So. Um, to me, I feel like it was un it was an unnecessary part of her really big haul back in 2012. Um, you know, but I, I don't feel like she deserved this one. But you know, I still love Adele and I still love that song, so it is what it is. <laughs> All right, y'all, and for the best winner of the decade for me and best music video, that would definitely have to go to Childish Gambino's "This Is America," and I hope it's your pick too. If you have some sense. <laughs> 
But yeah, man, what, what can I say about this amazing uh, video that just stopped the world for a second? Like, This Is America was such an unforgettable moment when that video dropped. Uh, the song is special too, but that video especially is really special. Um, it's such a brilliant video that it's moving so fast <laughs> that you can that you can never really take in all the stuff that happened. But at the same time, you're like you're feeling the vibe, at, you know, at the same time. Such a really cool. Video. There's not a lot of videos that drop where like things are happening so fast, but yet you're still like in it Like usually like you tune out or you're kind of like you're like you're frustrated by the video But that video it, you weren't frustrated at all You were just encapsulated by how dope it was and how dope the direction was the direction was so dope Shout out to Hiro Mirai such an amazing director um, yeah, the, that direction was perfection um, with such creative ideas. I love the way they were like, you know, going between shots and between locations. Um, the con the concepts were so so daring and so like disturbing, but so real. So I, I loved it. Um, yeah, man, I really love how they executed that video, and it had a real last message about you know the continual state of our country. So I love what that video was getting at. Um, such a powerful video that. Um, I feel like even when we're all old, we'll just look back and be like, oh my god, I remember this video. This was insane. Uh, really an achievement, a, a really an achievement in, um, in, in showcasing such a deep message through a visual medium. I love that. I love that video. This is America will go down to my favorite videos of all time. Definitely my favorite video of uh, this decade that won the Grammy. Such an amazing video. Shout out to Childish, shout out to Hiro Mirai, and shout out to all the team that worked together to make that video. When that video came out, I was shook, but it, it was amazing. So that's definitely my, my best one of the decade. And right under that, my runner up, we're gonna go with We Found Love by Rihanna. Another video that I love to pieces. A special shout out to Malina Matsukis again and to Rihanna uh, for just poetically capturing the raw and addictive nature of toxic love um, in the We Found Love video. Uh, one of my personal favorite songs and videos of all time. I still remember when that dropped. I would think I was, I was in high school when that video dropped. And I remember just watching that video being like, oh my God, this is such a cool video. Like they're really telling such a dope story um, in a really cool way with like a really basic pop song but they're telling such a deep story in such a poetic and beautiful um way um yeah man like i said one of my favorite songs videos of all time the storytelling was amazing um and really just the editing and the overall vibe of the video uh was just masterful so uh shout out to rihanna and shout out to malia matsukas for we found love one of my other personal favorites from this decade for sure all right y'all so yeah that was my video on my best and worst grammy winners of the 2010s hope you guys enjoyed the video uh let me know down below what y'all thought about my picks and you know let me down below what were your you know favorite and least favorite winners of uh, the 2010s from the categories you care about if it's something i didn't talk about you know give me your opinions on you know uh the alternative rock uh you know country jazz categories whatever else like talk to me down below about who were your favorite and least favorite winners from the past decade i want to know i'm really curious to see what y'all think too as well but yeah man i appreciate it. hope you guys know the video uh like always if you haven't already don't forget to like share and subscribe okay appreciate y'all but like i always say guys live your best life drink more water stay woke and if you're mad or sad go listen to your favorite song make you feel better okay go listen to your favorite song and as always guys please covid is not a joke it's not a hoax please take it serious this virus is not playing with us out here please wear your mask wash your hands social distance as much as you can please y'all i'm gonna say it again wear your mask wash your hands social distance as much as you can it's okay to go out and live your life, but just wear a mask and do your due diligence, okay? All right, y'all, come on. COVID is, is definitely not a joke. It's, 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 it's real. It's here, and we got to take care of it. Come on, y'all. All right, so, yeah, I'm going to get off my soapbox. I'm in public health, so I got to get my shit off. But, yeah, man, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for thank you here for watching. This has been your boy, Bright, the R&B kid. But for now, I'm signing off, baby. Bye, y'all. Peace. Function just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing. No, 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 no. I came to fight. You came to function just do that, baby. Don't worry about nothing. No, no, no. Relax just a little bit. You don't gotta worry. You can just.